Okay, gentlemen, we're going to look at an example that I started in class, some of your classes, um, or I started in all of your classes. Some of your classes I finished, some of the classes I didn't finish, so I just want to go over it for the ones that didn't, and maybe for the ones that did but missed something, you can kind of just see it out here. Reminder, this is a problem we go over in class either on Friday or Monday. The last time we saw a problem like this I worked out was homework 2.8 video so it's in the assignment for homework 2.8 and it is the async 11 slide number four it's actually this right here i had done this in uh in a video last time so if you go to the homework 2.8 you click on that video it's me working through this one which is this problem from async 2.11 slide number four from the desmos activity so just a reference if you haven't seen that one and you want to watch that one too to help clear it up this one and that one could help so, looking here, domain is our first question. Looking here, fractions. I only have problems with the denominator of fractions because I don't want to divide by zero. So this is the number on the bottom of my fraction. What would be the value for x that if I plug it in would make this zero? That's obviously zero. So I am skipping the x value zero because I am not allowed to divide by zero. I don't look to see if anything can be canceled right, right now, no. I just have to see what from the original cannot be used. I factor it if I need. Here I don't have to factor it. I can't use zero. Done. Next, is it continuous? Since I have a number I'm skipping, it is not continuous. If my domain were negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers, then I would be continuous, yes. Once I skip any number, I am now not continuous. And the next question is, well, what kind of discontinuity is it, and where is it? Well, looking over here, I would have to see, can this be canceled with anything up top? If it can, it's removable at zero. If this cannot be canceled with anything up top, that means at zero, I have an infinite discontinuity and a vertical asymptote. If this can be canceled, it's removable and there's no vertical asymptote. So let's look at the top. We can see from the top, our first choice is always to try to take out a GCF and I can take out a GCF. 2x squared now plus x minus 15 over x. I can see without finishing this trinomial factoring that those two can cancel, and that tells me since I can cancel out the x's with the xgcf on top, I have a removable discontinuity at x equals zero. The, the factor I crossed out has a root of zero. That's why we picked this. So that's where I'm removable. Okay, so that means is there a vertical asymptote? Well, it doesn't look like it because I'm going to have this. I'm going to have this left over, over one, over nothing. This is what's left over, over nothing. So now there is no more problems once I remove that discontinuity. So there is no vertical asymptote. There is no vertical asymptote. Okay, we look at our, so I'll finish factoring this in a moment. But if we go down to horizontal, our rules for horizontal say, well, the degree of the numerator, how it compares to the degree of the denominator. So, looking over here, what's the degree of the top originally? A 3. What's the degree of the bottom originally? A 1. Degree of 3 on top, degree of 1 on bottom. I'm greater on top than I am on bottom, which means there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay? Up till there, we've not even looked at our graph yet. Okay? Increasing, decreasing, maximum, we're going to have to look at our graph for it. So we'll do that in a sec. Y-intercept x-intercept and range we'll do from our graph too but x-intercept we can actually do ourselves here because if I were to look at my reduced form this gives me a way to find my x-intercepts not always on this one over here we couldn't find x-intercepts 
Well, there were none, but we didn't know how to factor it to find them anyway. I know this is going to cross the x-axis because this is the reduced form of this, and I can use this reduced form, and I can factor it. So how would I factor this? Two numbers that multiply to a times c, negative 30, and add to my b value, which is 1, and that's 6 and negative 5. So we know that this is 2x squared. We put the 6 in front, the 5 in the back. GCF on the left-hand side. GCF on the right-hand side. 2x minus 5, x plus 3. And that factoring should be pretty straightforward for us. If, since this is the reduced and factored form, I'll go, this is, the, this is, well, this is your reduced, I'll do it like this, actually. This is your reduced form. And this is your reduced form and factored, reduced and factored form. Okay. The only reason I'm doing this is to help me find my x-intercepts, which are... 5 over 2 and negative 3. That's the top, the numerator that we're working with, right? This is the numerator we're working with. So this is not where my zeros are. That would be, this is not where uh, my domain would lack, no, because this is the numerator, the top, which is fine. So those two values are my x-intercepts because once I've removed the bottom, I can find my x-intercepts there. So those are my two x-intercepts. 5 over 2 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. Those are my two x-intercepts. Okay, now the y-intercept, we got to look at the original. We saw that when we were taking out GCFs and things like that. It changes my y-intercept. Based on the original, I would have to plug in when x is equal to 0. And if I plug it in, to the original, got to be in the original, I get undefined. Is that true? Yes, I skipped the number 0. I have a removable discontinuity at 0. I'm discontinuous at 0. So there actually is a hole on my graph where my y-intercept should be. So there really is no y-intercept here. There's supposed to be one, and it looks like there's one on my graph, but it's missing. There's a small hole there. Okay? At this point, we've done all we can do algebraically. We're going to have to look at our picture. So let's go to Desmos. I think I have it in here. Practice function. Bam. And I'll... Let me close this. Close. Okay. Here's my function. Okay, negative 3 and 2.5, which is 5 over 2. Those are my x-intercepts, which I found when I factored my reduced numerator, the top that was I reduced. If I go, there's no dot where my y-intercept should be, right? You see how there's no dot there? There usually would be a dot on my y-intercept. It looks like it's at 15. It looks like it's going to be at negative 15. And here, well, there we go. There's my hole. I'm undefined at my y-intercept, so my graph does not have a y-intercept. It's supposed to be at 15, negative 15, but it's not at negative 15 because 0, x equals 0, is a removable discontinuity. And here it is, x is 0, y is undefined. It's a removable discontinuity. So looking at my graph, I am increasing to the right, to the right all over here, I'm increasing to the right, of that point labeled on the bottom, and I'm decreasing to the left of that point on the bottom. This point on the bottom is my minimum. My minimum is that point right there. So my minimum is this x value, negative 1 quarter comma negative 15.125. That's 15 and an eighth, but I'll leave it like that. That's my minimum. It is a local minimum. All minimums are local minimums. All maximums are local maximums. 
and it's also the absolute minimum because that point on the left is the lowest my graph ever reaches. My graph will never, it's a parabola, so that is the lowest point of my graph. There is no maximum point. I'll write no max point, actually. No max point. It's got to be an ordered pair. There is none because my graph goes upwards forever. We know that I am decreasing from negative infinity, always soft brackets, to my x values. And then I'm increasing from that x value to infinity. Increasing from the x value to infinity, decreasing from negative infinity to that x value. The last one is range. Again, you just have to look at, but my range is from, this is one of the few things that involves my y value, negative 15.125 upwards to infinity. Upwards to infinity. Right, you gotta go positive. It's up, which is positive y, so it's from negative 15.125 upwards to infinity. If my graph were upside down, That means it would be, it's a different number here, but that means it would be from negative infinity, my range, up until that value of negative 14.875. There's a different number because I made it negative, but that would, that would be the case. Here's my graph we've been looking at for right now. Okay, hopefully that clears up some of the confusion. We use the reduced form to find my x-intercepts here. You're not always going to be able to do that. Like up here, there were none. So we couldn't find any x-intercepts. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Please take this video and watch it and maybe take down some notes if we don't get to it in your class or just maybe use it as a review. Good luck.